I can't remember. It's called Reading Jail. And we've all heard of Reading Jail because of Oscar Wilde. Reading Jail is famous because Oscar Wilde ended up there. But there was to be another input. <coughs> When I began dealing between London and Paris, one of my specialities was the art of the bronze decorative medallion. I was hooked and bought Art Nouveau or Art Deco pieces designed by known bronze sculptors because it was easy to find in the late 70s. I brought them back to London and mainly put them into Sphinx, working closely with Daniel Farron. I did well and became quite knowledgeable in these little treasures. Some must have not sold, so I took them to my stand in Portobello Road, the famous London flea market in Notting Hill. One Saturday, a good-looking young man turned up with an eagle eye for detail and bought all my Art Nouveau medallions. His name was Richard. Hungry for more? He came back the following Saturday with his very friendly boyfriend, Peter, who was at least 10 years younger and very outrageous. Oh, this was in the 80s, by the way. I forgot to say that. Over time, we all became friends, in inverted commas. I made the fatal mistake, never mix business with pleasure. It became complicated. Peter was obviously exploited and was the houseboy. His job was to restore, make good the house and cook for when his master returned at the weekend. Richard worked during the week as an accountant at Newbury where they held the famous horse races. Richard was an inheritance tax accountant and I gather highly qualified and well paid while poor blonde kept Peter got his board and lodgings got bored and lonely during the week and used to go cruising. At least that's what he confided to Martin. That's my husband, was my husband. Peter adored my magical husband, Martin, who I suppose became a father figure. So when Peter offered to cook him French cuisine with us buying the food, Martin didn't say no. Not a word was mentioned to Richard, of course, even when once Peter dared to kiss Martin full on the lips. Martin was shocked, but saw the joke. But Peter was so sweet, charming and naive that he was forgiven for being so outlandish and outrageous. Christmas came round. They lived in Holland Park, so it was close by. And for some odd reason, Richard proposed we all spend Christmas Day together with Peter as our chef. How could we refuse? My mother was coming from Liverpool. Why for Christmas? I don't recall as we never celebrated the spirit of Christmas, being Jewish. Martin, on the other hand, welcomed a cosy Christmas with all the trimmings like presents and a Christmas tree, which he had celebrated in his first marriage. And let us not forget the Queen's speech to the nation at three o'clock the annual event on the BBC. The financial arrangements were unclear. We presumed we were invited and tried to discuss with Peter, who was very vague, what our contribution would be food-wise. We, In the end, we brought along with gifts, smoked salmon, expensive champagne for the toast, plus Stilton and pork for afterwards, all very British and traditional. My mother Peggy was made most welcome, as was an, an unknown, well-endowed female guest who brought her beloved pug dog, which sat on her lap and ate, hand-fed, as much fillet steak as we did. The day was drawn out and too long, overloaded with food and rather dull conversation, with Peter running in and out of the kitchen while Richard at the head of the table acted as Lord of the Manor with a smile, or was it a smirk? Time for a walk after the financial board game Monopoly. Richard got excited over the money and became an aggressive player. 
I got bored not understanding the concept of money in thought. Uh, his sudden change of behavior, oh, and thought, his change of behavior was in bad taste and not in keeping with the Portobello Richard I had known and had de business dealings with. Here was another animal I did not like, nor the wheezing pug next to him, nor its over-endowed mistress. Time to definitely go home. I wanted to leave, as did Martin. As we took our leave around six, instead of saying goodbye and thanks, Martin, being a correct person, asked Richard if we owed any money. To his amazement, Richard said he would work out the bill with Peter, especially as the Phillips stay could come from Harrods. I was outraged when he told me and visualized Lady Pug not being given a bill and we would be paying for her. Unfortunately, my mother had left her glasses case behind and so when Martin dropped in on Boxing Day to collect it, he was handed a bill for about £60 from memory. A lot of hard-earned money in 1982 for the three of us. Like an idiot, he paid up. If it had been me, I would have told him right in the eye how outrageous and insincere he had been refusing a pay. Of course, that was the end of our so-called friendship and business dealings. Time passed and I met Gregory, a, jo a jewellery dealer in Alfie's flea market, who had known Peter too. He brought me up to date. We exchanged Richard stories. Poor Peter kept on fainting at the dinner table and eventually it was seen as the first signs of AIDS, which had only just arrived in England. Gregory went every day to console Peter in hospital. Richard did not go once. Suddenly, Richard moved house and began living with a woman. His collection of bronzes grew to busts and statues. One day, recounted Gregory, he went somewhere exotic and expensive on holiday and someone accessed his files at the Newbury office and found a discrepancy. The colleague did some more digging in his absence and discovered Richard had misappropriated old lady's funds, an embezzler no less. He got his comeuppance, Gregory gleefully exclaimed, thinking of poor Peter, one of the first tragic victims of AIDS in the 80s, claiming the lives of so many talented creative individuals. I still think fondly of Peter from time to time, as he asked us if we were on farting terms with people at a time when most people would not dare to use such an explicit word. Today, decades later, when no one would raise an eyebrow, especially in Gaylandia. And so Richard was imprisoned in Reading Jail, but something tells me he was not writing a ballad like Oscar Wilde. I want to say something about you.